everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the battery options we have available to throw into a radio controlled transmitter for radio controlled cars. Now, another thing that we're gonna be looking at in this video here today is with the featured transmitter, I'm gonna see if I can throw the receiver in here and get this vehicle up to its top speed. I'm gonna try on 2S, which is what this setup has been designed for when selecting the components. We're also gonna do 3S because that is possible and I've never had this vehicle on 3S. I need some help from you guys. Let me know in the comments section below what kind of top speeds should we be expecting from a 118 scale. We're not altering gearing or looking at any fancy gearing. We're using all the stock components essentially in terms of gearing with a brushless upgrade in here and of course the 3S battery pack. No idea what kind of top speed this should give me but I'm looking for something that's pretty decent for this size scale which I've never done before. Let's get started and talk about the batteries we have as available options for our radio controlled transmitter. So I have a couple transmitters here in front of me and if I open up the case, the battery door on them, you can see that this particular transmitter just has an open bay and within that open bay we can have loose cells being fit in there. And of course they are the double A size cells. Now if I look at a spectrum radio and open up the, the bay there as well, you have the exact same layout. So both of these use four double A size battery packs. And you know, that for the most part will probably get you by, but there might become a time where you're sick and tired of throwing in double A batteries into your transmitter every single time that you find that transmitter to be inoperable because of the battery voltage level. In which case for myself, this is the exact position I found myself in many, many years ago. And what I decided to do is look for alternates. And I've gone down different paths with different transmitters based off of what I was exactly looking for. In some cases, I want something that's fast, quick, and easy. And in other cases, I'm looking for something that's a little bit more long-term where I can get more runtime out of that specific battery setup. Now, when it comes to your double A's, the ones that you typically throw out, those have a good amount of life for the transmitter, but not the maximum amount of life. What is really good about double A's that are throwaways, you can essentially go to the store, you can pick them out, you can buy them. You can, once you buy a whole pack of them, you can shove them in and when they're dead, you toss them, shove the next set in and you're good to go within about a minute or so. However, if you do have a transmitter that doesn't just take four of these batteries, maybe it takes six and less so these days, but there are transmitters that could take up to eight of these double A's, then you're going and cycling through a lot of batteries and you're throwing away a lot of money. This is where you begin to think about all the money that you're throwing away and there must be another solution that works well for radio controlled enthusiasts. And there is other options that's essentially a drop in fit and of course the most obvious one is looking at a double A that is rechargeable. Now I use double A's that are rechargeable. Here is two of the four that I use. This is an energizer. It's about 2000 milliamp hour or so. And of course these are 1.2 volts per cell. You use four of them. So the voltage of the actual transmitter is going to drop because your typical recha non rechargeable is going to be 1.5 volts. They usually come brand new at about 1.6 in terms of the voltage and they're considered dead closer to about 1.0 which is really good for the nickel metal hydride batteries that these rechargeables are because they come at a nominal voltage of 1.2, which is a little bit low, but still can work for most applications here in transmitters. And they're also considered dead somewhere around the 1.0 volt mark. Now what I like about these is it's very easy for me to go and throw these into the charger that they actually came from and I can charge these batteries in anywhere from 15 minutes to about 4 hours depending on the charger that I use for these. However, there are a couple disadvantages when it comes to these batteries as well. They do have a self discharge rate. That means when they're sitting in your transmitter and you're not actually using that transmitter, over time they are slowly going to deplete in their charge capacity. Meaning that when you get to that transmitter later in time, you probably want to look at the charge of that specific battery set and if you need to charge it up or top it off. This is what I do for nickel metal hydrides every single time that I have them sitting for quite a bit of time. If 
you're looking for something just a bit better than your typical AA that's rechargeable, you can look and see if your transmitter has the capabilities of running on an LIFE battery pack or a lithium polymer battery pack. Now your manual is going to you know, tell you of a certain port that you have access to within your battery bay. And if you have access to that port, it just makes it very, very simple. Now luckily for us, the transmitter that's being featured in this video, thanks a lot for Dumbo RC for sending this four channel version of their radio controlled transmitter. This has a port that can be found right here on the back side of this battery bay. We can insert a connector into this port and then have a battery pack that can sit in this cavity that can be used with this specific radio. Now this is quite a common thing, but unfortunately not all radios come with that option. For example, this is the Spectrum radio that I've used for many, many years here and it doesn't actually contain a port that allows us to place a battery pack in there and use conveniently. You are stuck with the double A's or rechargeable double A's here unless you do some significant or further modification to that battery bay. Now a lot of times too is you can actually pull out the bottom case and expose a larger surface area, a larger volume of space inside of your battery pack bay in order to get larger capacity batteries in there. Now one thing that's really nice about lithium polymer is if you up the voltage and you maintain the similar capacities you're going to get a much longer run time out of that transmitter for the same amount of total weight which is really handy because when it comes to a transmitter I don't like having heavy especially back in the days when we had eight double A's of batteries inside your transmitter that gets heavy over a long period of time and from my point of view it's just not a convenient solution especially when it's time to change them all out for a new set. If you're lucky enough to buy a transmitter that comes with its own rechargeable battery pack, this is the ultimate solution to give you the maximum amount of runtime out of that transmitter while also keeping it as light as possible. Now there's another thing that I do want to talk about when it comes to batteries and the transmitter. What I've done with the old Spectrum radio here is it only operates off of a four cell battery pack that would consist of the nickel metal hydride or you can add a fifth if you modify modify this bay here. What I've done for this specific radio though is not run typical double A's or rechargeable double A's. What I did is convert it actually to an LIFE battery pack that you can find a spot to mount it if it's inside here or if you just sit it up on the top. Now this is completely, you know, modifying your transmitter which is completely up to you if you actually want to take that approach. If you do take that approach, you do have to understand how your modifications can actually impact that transmitter and ultimately kill that transmitter. But one of the things that's nice is that a fully charged or fully brand new double A cell is going to add up to about 6.4 volts where an LIFE is going to be about 6.6 .6 volts. And for most transmitters that extra 0.2 voltage is not going to cause damage to it. And this is what I learned from the spectrum radio is that I could actually operate it on that voltage allowing me to use the battery pack that I ultimately wanted to use with that transmitter because that transmitter had a lot of on time especially when running slow moving vehicles that the battery pack inside of them lasts for just about ever. When it comes to the speed run vehicles, not so much of an issue, but for those types of off-road vehicles, I do like to have a transmitter battery pack that lasts a very long time to keep up with the amount of runtime that the radio control car can have. As I mentioned earlier, let me know in the comment section below what you prefer to use in terms of batteries in your transmitter. I know I have friends that prefer to use just your typical throwaway double A's while others tend to like a rechargeable form of battery pack in the transmitter. I want to summarize a couple of points that I believe is important for a transmitter battery battery pack before we see the top speed that we can get out of this 118 scale vehicle. The first point there is the voltage range that your radio is going to be accepting. Once you know what kind of voltage range that that transmitter accepts, you can adapt your batteries to fit that transmitter. You have options of batteries to use, double A's, you can use the rechargeable double A's, you can use LIFE battery packs that have a nominal voltage of 6.6 .6 volts or 9.9 .9 volts if that works for your transmitter, or you can use lithium polymer battery packs with a voltage of 2s at 7.4 nominal or 11.1 using a 3s pack okay guys let's throw a battery pack into this and see if we can make a top speed run on 2s and 3s 
Here we have the truck, and I'm talking over the video here as we go through and see exactly how this works. First thing I need to do is take a look at the on switch, make sure I can find it, get that blue light lit up. Now I know that the radio is active. I can try it, the steering, make sure steering's okay, and I have control of the vehicle. Check for traffic, and we're gonna send it out. First thing I need to do with this brand new radio system is make sure my steering is in trim. On my way back, what I really truly appreciate about these baseline radios is that we can adjust the trim with a mechanical dial. What you can essentially do is you know, drive the vehicle and adjust it at the rate that you feel necessary to find that exact point where it tracks nice, straight, and true. So it's not a digital setting, but you get the feel and you're gonna be able to get that locked in very easily and especially very quickly. Now that we have that set, we can make a few passes and see exactly what this thing can do on 2S. Now, I just watched the video, so I already know what it's going to be able to do, but at the time I was guessing that I was probably around the 25 kilometer an hour mark. Our first pass there from right to left, it does seem like it's probably around that. Another traffic check. Make another left to right pass. Keep it straight on the road so we don't hit the gray car is a good idea. And we'll get her turned around and come back in. And then, of course, when we come back in, we're using our speed meter there to get the GPS reading as to what the top speed was. So once we get this stopped, I can go and grab the phone. And with the phone, I can now stop this reading and then so first stop and then read. And we'll see what we got here. Twenty nine kilometers an hour off the first reading. This is on 2S. Now we're going to throw this 3S pack, 2200 milliamp hours. Quite a big battery for this car. We're going to throw it in there. I'm going to skip forward so you don't need to see exactly how that gets dropped in. You know how to change batteries. Let's get that switched over. Now we got that switched over. I'm going to show you the endpoint adjustment because I think this is such a cool detail to have to this general entry level style transmitter. So you can see as I make that adjustment just barely behind the radio, you can see there's not much movement from those tires, which is really good for speed runs. If I dial all the way up, now you can see the tires are moving quite significantly. So I'm going to dial that back down. I'm using about 25% or so of the endpoint adjustment on this mechanical setting. With that, I know I don't have a large margin of control over the steering, which should allow me to have those fine adjustments that you need when you're at high speeds. So with our speed meter now zeroed out and started, we're gonna make our first pass here again from left to right. We're gonna try and keep this even more straight now that we got more speed. Definite improvement from the 2S. Remember, this is the first time that we're seeing this vehicle on 3S. I've never had 3S installed in this vehicle because for the most part, this has only been an indoor vehicle. Now I'm gonna have some tire wear and vehicle wear on it from outdoors. So it seems like a pretty good step in power. Now I know that I ended up hitting about 30 kilometers an hour on the 2S, I'm expecting about 50% more than that. So 50% more than the 29 kilometers an hour is about another 15 kilometers an hour. I'm expecting somewhere now around the 45 kilometer an hour mark if we get the same proportionality between 2S and 3S being about 50% more battery voltage we should expect 50% more speed. So now that we got a few passes, we're gonna pull this back in here. Our speed measurement, we reach over for the phone so that we can get that stopped. We're gonna stop the reading. Just gotta click that stop button, right? There we go. And now we can click that read button. Excellent, you know how to use it. 46 kilometers an hour. So that's pretty much about what we expected. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.